Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nate tells Mamie in the Jazz Lounge that it's a reason to celebrate that he's been wanting to take her out ever since she returned. Mamie is unsure if everyone would concur. She queries him about the mayhem at Newman and his motivation for wanting to be involved. Knowing where she's going with this, Nate tells her that he's fine where he is and that Devon and Lily don't want him at Chancellor Winters. Mamie is confident that he will regain their faith. Nate doesn't want to be in a position where people don't respect his opinions or where he has to constantly watch out for new charges against him. What can I do to change your mind? inquires Mamie. Nate queries Mamie's reasoning for thinking that he should go back to Chancellor Winters. Mamie needs to fulfill her responsibilities and reunite the family. Nate remarks that she just purchased a small part of the business, not enough to have any real influence. There must be more to this, he feels. Mamie maintains that her driving force is to get him back together with his cousins. Nate informs her that although he shared some of the blame, the previous visit wasn't enjoyable. He had to take action in order to reach his full potential, even though he enjoys working with Victoria. Is it possible you just expected too much too soon? Mamie queries. Although Nate acknowledges going through a transitional phase, he believes he's now at home. Mamie hears him talking. Nate informs her that he's content at Newman's since he is respected and cherished there. He will always be the outsider, according to Mamie. He would only ever be Victoria's in-law and never hold actual authority, even if he were to wed her. And you're saying I would at Chancellor Winters, wonders Nate. Jill is a part of that dynamic, he reminds her. Things change, honey, chuckles Mamie. No pithy comment. Phyllis asks, teasing Tucker in his suite. She found out about his relationship with Mammy Johnson. Tucker claims it's none of her concern and that it's personal and private. He should think of her as a fly in his ointment, Phyllis advises him. Although Tucker maintains that it's little, Phyllis is certain that Jill, Devon, and Lily won't agree. What do you want, Phyllis? Tucker queries. Phyllis is curious as to where he got in touch with Mamie in order to take over his son's business. Tucker questions Phyllis about what she believes to be known and why he would harm his son in that way. Phyllis admits that she recently dug deeply into his online activity. Tucker teases her about needing Jack's praise so much that she knows it was all for show. You recently transferred some money into a company called LBB, Phyllis explains. You're going after your son's company, aren't you? Is the question that Chancellor Winters posed to Mamie Johnson, who recently revealed that she had made a sizable investment in the company. You make use of Mamie. Your funds were transferred directly into Chancellor Winters by Mamie. Plot depth increases. Tucker scoffs at her enthusiasm. But he hasn't denied it, Phyllis observes. Tucker advises her to find a pastime and shrugs, saying he makes investments all the time. Phyllis believes she ought to speak with Devon. Tucker declares that she could care less about Devon or Lily, asking, What are you after? In what way does this help you? Kyle informs Jack and Billy at the Abbott Mansion that although tonight hasn't been the nicest, it will pass. Tucker is informed by Jack and Billy that they are planning and that they have learned certain details regarding Tucker's recent history, potentially devastating and career-ending facts. Is Tucker aware that they have it? Kyle queries. Very aware, Billy replies. Jack claims that in retaliation, he planted a listening device and called them on their bluff. It's time to remove his power, drop the hammer, and divulge the information. Or you could make him more vengeful and start a war, suggests Kyle. They argue over Tucker's strategy to divert their attention and prevent them from discovering his true intentions. Jack says they can get through this as long as they remain a family. Once more, Kyle observes that they are in agreement. Jack and Billy are appreciative of one another. This is the time for us to come together as a family, Jack asserts. Billy wants to reveal the secret as soon as possible in the morning. Jack promises to see him, then so they can talk about it. After Billy leaves, Jack asks Kyle if he can rely on him for discretion and support. 
Whatever you need, sneers Kyle. Jack is hoping that once Tucker is off their backs, they can have a conversation about where he should be placed. Kyle tells him that he just wants one seat, and it's looking very unlikely that he will get it. As Diane and Tracy enter, Kyle as Subaki excuses himself. That was pretty chilly, recalls Tracy. Jack clarifies that Kyle believes he's still making fun of him. Phyllis wants Tucker to leave her alone in his suite. You came to me with this. Tucker snorts. He harassed Phyllis in front of her kids, according to her complaints. Tucker queries her expectations, saying, You're going to get stung because you kicked a hornet's nest. In response, Phyllis quips, Get ready to be stung. There's a knock on the door and he laughs. When Phyllis opens it, Audra is standing there. The women are staring at each other, and Tucker seems amused. Phyllis queries Audra about the nature of her late-night business. How is that any of Audra's concern, she thinks. Phyllis mocks her, saying that she's seen many incarnations of her come and go in this town over the years. A hunter. People are something you chew up and then spit out. Utilize people. That you two are close is not surprising. Audra enters and notices the animosity. Phyllis observes that she destroyed her daughter's union, reminding her that they broke up because Summer stood up for her. People in this town have long memories, so Phyllis cautions her to be careful who she pisses off. Tucker steps in to say hello and thank Phyllis for coming. We have an understanding, right? She asks. Tucker responds, yes, for the time being. When Phyllis leaves, Audra remarks, She's a treat, sniffing. She is curious as to what Tucker done to make her that abrasive. Phyllis enjoys stirring up trouble, and as she's causing it for you, she's causing it for me as well. She gripes that the redhead might jeopardize their plans for the future. Does that employ Audra is back on board? Tucker wonders. Fixing his coffee at Crimson Lights, Kyle flashbacks to Audra, urging him to team up with her and Tucker. Diane enters and informs him that they must speak, saying, Your father is concerned about you. Kyle is going to obtain what he wants because he knows what he wants. Billy and he both understand one other. Diane apologizes. Kyle doesn't feel angry. He just can see things clearly now. Diane maintains that Jack respects his viewpoint. Kyle is aware of this, which is another reason it's critical that he help Billy succeed. What does this entail for his future? Diane wonders. I recently got an interesting offer, but I'm not sure it's the right move, considers Kyle. Diane bemoans the fact that he doesn't work with his family, but she understands that he has pursue his own interests. So, long as that path doesn't lead back to Audra. Nate fills Mamie in on his experience at Chancellor Winters in the Jazz Lounge. Although he had grand ideas, they didn't fit Devon's plan. Caught between the two was Lily. Although Jill co-owns the business, Mamie observes that she is unable to take credit for anything at this time since it is all Lily and Devon. Nate believes that Jill, who has a significant influence, works closely with Devon and Lily. Mamie thinks the three of them might be a new power generation if she could just persuade Devon and Lily to press reset and add Nate back into the equation. I don't see that happening, laughs Nate. Mamie cautions him against underestimating her skills. Are you in when I do manage to make this happen? Asking Jack whether he's okay, Tracy stops by the Abbott home. When Diane and I walked in earlier, there was a little tension between you and Kyle. Jack claims that even now, Kyle is still angry with him for pushing him to go from Marchetti after he and Summer split up. Tracy is certain that was challenging for him. Jack believes that he is stumbling and making poor decisions. Tracy thinks he might be simply snapping at everything. His former position as co-CEO of Jabot is what he wants, but Jack can't give it to him. Tracy looks at him in shock, agreeing that Jack is in a bad situation and that he should force Billy out. Perhaps it's not so much the position as it is how Kyle feels his father perceives him, she speculates. What do you believe Kyle deserves in the end? Kyle tells Diane to quit bugging him about Audra and find a way to trust him at Crimson Lights. Diane finds it incomprehensible that he would like to be connected to someone of that caliber. She's accomplished, intelligent, and entertaining, according to Kyle. 
Diane is certain that there is more to her story. Kyle mentions that both Diane and she used to work together. Kyle believes he could pick up some tips from her, given that he is aware of her tendency to pursue her desires. He then turns his back on his mother. Audra informs Tucker in his room that she intends to pursue Jebot. Because Nikki doesn't trust her and probably never will, Newman is a dead end for her. She brought on this fresh, flawless helper. It's almost airy. Tucker believes she might be jealous. Audra isn't interested in battling for Nikki's favor. She is done with it and wants to be in a place where she knows she is in charge. Tucker cautions that if she wants things to succeed, she must do her share of the job. Audra believes that she is on the verge of severing Kyle's ties to his family. That's a major stride for tiny Kyle, in Tucker's opinion. Having handed him the top place at Jebot beside her, Audra is no doubt confident. Tucker believes she overplayed her hand, but Audra counters that Jack has made Kyle feel ignored. Kyle is ready for a reset, he says, expressing their shared aim. It's just a question of time. Nate wonders if Mamie is trying to execute a coup and get Jill out of the jazz lounge. Mamie only fears that she won't be interested. Nate contends that she will battle to keep the company since it is important to her. Mamie responds, maybe she just needs to find a new man, pointing out that she enjoys spending money and traveling. Mamie knows she's had her chance in the spotlight and feels she has. Nate wonders what Mamie isn't telling him because he thinks there's more going on here. Why are you accusing me of something, Nate? inquires Mamie. Something doesn't stack up, according to Nate. She begs him to tell her whether she will take her offer to return to his family's company, since she believes he is merely dodging her question. Where I am, I'm happy, declares Nate. Mamie wants him to tell her he'll give it some thought, noting that it's not a refusal. Although Dev and Lily and Nate agree, he believes that their current level of closeness is the closest they will ever get. Mamie says, I'll just have to prove you wrong, while raising her drink. If Jack is being truthful, he gave Kyle more than he deserved at the Abbott residence, Tracy is told, in business anyway. Too soon, he shot to the top. According to Jack, he didn't devote enough time to honing his business acumen and assent, he has been forced to consider his actions since their breakup, and he has come to realize that he has been conceited and entitled. For example, he teamed with Victor. Tracy queries if he has expressed regret or remorse. Even that, according to Jack, has only been ceremonial. He's not trying to figure out where he went wrong. Where is Kyle's place at Jibot? Is the question Tracy asks as Kyle enters and listens covertly. I think the necessary step is for him to step back and start from the ground up, Jack responds. A reset is warranted. It's time for Kyle to make his way through Jabot and earn his stripes. After leaving the house, Kyle texts Audra, saying, Let's talk. After seeing Kyle's text message in Tucker's suite, Audra lets Tucker know she was able to reach Kyle. According to Tucker, the message may signify anything at all, it feels like a trap. That's how his mind functions, not Kyle's, Audra informs him. Tucker asks, have you fallen for this guy? Fearing she has a blind spot going into this, it would not be a good plan. He doesn't need to be concerned about Audra, she assures him. Tucker does not want emotions to get in the way of their plans. Audra muses that he might still be caught off guard by Ashley returning. Tucker says, that's never going to happen. Mamie thanks Nate for the drink at the club. She is a power, he assures her, and she has given him plenty to consider. They kiss, then he walks away. Tucker shows up and inquires, how are things in your world, to Mamie? Mamie is unable to gripe. I hope you have a pleasant night, he says to her. You too, she responds, before making her way upstairs. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.